In this part of the free masterclass, you'll learn how to add different textures together using different UV maps. You'll learn how to unwrap the mesh properly, and I'm also going to explain about alpha masks and how to use a mix color node the right way. I'm certain that you'll learn quite a few things, and at the end of this process, we will have a model with a texture that we can use throughout the entire free course. So without further ado, let's get started. So yes, welcome to the second part. We are now going to start the texturing process. You're going to learn a lot of awesome stuff right now because we're using several different UV maps. We have to mix together several different textures in order to make it look good. So we're just going to make two materials in total. And first of all, we have got our object right here, as you noticed from the previous tutorial. I have done one extra thing though, and I didn't tell you guys about it. I used Control J to add it to our object because I'm not going to make animations with this where it's going to open up or anything like that. We're just going to move around the can, so it can pretty much be attached to it. And that's why I did that. You can do that as well by uh, basically just taking this, clicking on this and pressing Ctrl J and then you've got it over there. Now don't forget about the cylinder as well. You also got to add that to the can. I almost forgot. I'm going over into the EV shading part. Right now I'm going to turn off my statistics by the way because I think it dilutes from the entire project. We want there to be two different materials on this object and we can do that uh, by selecting all of these parts and selecting all of these parts and assigning their own materials to them. So, so we're going to select the bottom circle of this can, press Ctrl plus, 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 and all of this can be aluminium. So I am going to go over to materials, assign, and I'm going to call this aluminium. Very good. And I've assigned it. We're going to press on one, to go into this view, press Alt Z to look through it, press B to box select, and now we can select all of these lines. And you can see it doesn't actually select everything we need. It doesn't matter because we can now press on 7, press box select once again, pop, and as you can see, we now have everything we need. And I'm going to assign this. I'm going to select this part, this part, this part, this part, pretty much the middle of the can. Give this a new material as well. So assign, new. This is going to be our text body. Now, this is a trick that you might want to know about. If I click on aluminium and you press select right over here, you can only do this in edit mode, by the way. It selects the materials, uh, the parts of the mesh that we gave this material. And we can also deselect it like this and select our other parts. So you don't have to select it every time by hand uh, if you have already got your material set up. So what I'm first going to do is I'm going to make the text body material. It's on slot two in this case, because we made the aluminium first. You can just press over here and it will work out. I'm going to add an image texture to this. And I have placed all the files in the Patreon link. If you want to use that, you can. Uh, I've made my own and the way I did that is I can actually show you. I went into a fusion composition. I added text, it's right over here by the way. Contains absolute awesomeness, might cause shocks in the viewer. This will help you grow your business. I hope so, guys. I hope this really works out for you. The Blender Ender, the font I used is Bauhaus 93. And for other fonts, I used Franklin Gothic Demi. I just made some of these interesting patterns, turned some of them around, and uh, now I've basically got my text image. You can do this for yourself as well. So uh, I would actually recommend doing that so that you can use your own brand on your can and that way you are building your portfolio efficiently or you're just giving me free attention, which I also appreciate. So don't matter. You can download these files for free on Patreon and just use them. I've also got a symbol texture and we're going to use, we're going to mix those two textures together. Anyway, back in Blender, open. And I am going to bring in our can text. And right here, it is not aligned the correct way. Not a problem, I'm just going to unwrap it. And as you can see, it distorts the entire mesh. So let's drag this over here. We can use this little plus icon, drag it over here, then select a UV editor. And it's making a circle out of it. The reason why it does that is because this is a cylinder and we have forgot one very important step of this process. We have to make a seam. Uh, because if we make a seam, the program can understand, oh, all right, so I need to fold it open like this. You know, like those cube boxes that you used to have on high school or middle school, and you had to fold them into each other, basically that. So I'm going to select this edge all the way until this edge, press U and click on mark seam. 
And you know what? I'm just going to select this edge as well and select that edge as well, U mark seam. And now when I select our text body entirely by clicking here on the material on our select options and press unwrap, we get a perfect square rectangle or whatever. R180, because it is upside down, we do not want it to be upside down. I'm going to scale it on the x-axis, bring it down towards this side. I see that this is very much stretched. I do not like that, so I'm going to scale it on the y-axis as well until I'm happy. And I'm happy somewhere around here. That's very good. I'm going to make it a bit smaller, maybe. Maybe something like this. Just play around with this until you're happy. All right, so that's it for the text, pretty easy. Now I'm going to use some standard values for a GAN that I like to use on the principal BSDF. I am going to increase the metallic slider to one. And I'm going to increase the roughness to 0.52. And this determines the reflections that we get on this GAN. Doesn't have to be a lot. So I'm going into the specular and the specular has kind of changed the way it looks, but uh, it's still pretty much the same as it used to be. We're just going to place it on 0.72 and the anisotropic can be set to 1. Uh, you cannot see anything happening when you do this because uh, I think it only works in cycles. Light area. Let's bring it over here. Just increase the light. So something like this. And now we can actually see something happening. So the anisotropic is changing the way that the light is distributed on the can, in case you wanted to know. So uh, what we're going to do now is add a, cl a clear coat, which is uh, kind of an extra layer of paint that goes over things in order to protect it from uh, weathering and stuff like that. But it also gives it this uh, shiny look. So I'm going to increase the weight of this to one. And this is way too shiny. As you can see, the area lamp is being reflected entirely in this. We do not want that. So we have to play around with our roughness. I'm going to set it to 0.15. And this is already starting to look a lot better. Maybe we can go for 0.2 or 18. And this looks pretty good. And this is kind of the way that it can reflects, if you noticed in real life. It could be actually a little bit more reflective, like 0.15. We're just going for 0.15, why not? We increase the specularity, you can see that in the metal a little bit. You can play around with this, you can increase or decrease the roughness. I'm just going to set it to this value. This is one of our UV maps. And I am going to duplicate this principal BSDF. I'm going to add in another image texture by pressing Ctrl T, because now I want to add the symbol to this can textures. And we've got our cool pattern for the can. The way I made this actually is by going into my advanced environment tutorial from the table scene I did. And I made some baroque uh, type models for in the background. And I just took one of those, I placed it on a black screen, made it white. And then uh, I got my own alpha image for, these, uh, for this type of symbol. So you can do that with whatever texture or model you have. Very simple way to just make your own. This is the texture. Now, if we want to use this uh, with a texture map and we can move it up and down, but rotating doesn't really work. It kind of stretches it out. Same like this, rotation on the X, it doesn't work. Yeah, it just doesn't work like this. That's what I'm trying to say. So let's remove this. What we want to do is we want to combine these two textures together. We can press Ctrl zero by selecting both principal BCFs. Press Ctrl zero and now we get a mix node. Now, as you can see, the uh, text is right over there and it's being distorted right at the seam because uh, that's where there's some trouble. So we can just change that by using the Y value on our mapping node and moving our text to a different part. This is the way it looks like right now, but I want this to sit on top of my text. So I'm going to select it and we've got our two materials right over there. Let me show you what happens if we just simply try to combine those by just placing this one right over here. Now, as you can see, the textures kind of add to each other and they give this weird middle value. You can still see like the symbol underneath the text and it just looks weird. We want to use the text and cut out a part of the symbol so only the text is visible there because the text is on top. The way this works, and I'm going to show you, I've already prepared my sphere. 
Uh, and this is the texture for my sphere. I use the gradient texture and make this part black. Now I got a mixed color node and I've got my cool pattern. So I've added my cool pattern right here to the, uh, to the sphere and I've got a gradient over here. I've added a multiply with a factor to one and let's see what happens. Ah, so when it's black on this side and we use the multiply, it removes this entire area. And this is actually what we want to apply for our can. We are going over into our can. Let's remove the sphere for now. And we want to use this area of text to remove a part of this symbol. But first, the symbol needs to be located at the place that I want it to be at. First, I'm going to this tab where we have our vertex groups. And there's also a tab here for UV maps. And this is our UV map. I'm going to bring in a UV map node and select this UV map. And instead of using the texture coordinate, I'm going to use this UV map. And nothing should change because this is our UV map. Now I'm going to click on the plus button right here and create a new UV map. You have to select it by pressing on this camera icon right over there. Delete this and bring in a UV map and select our second UV map and bring it into the factor. And now when we unwrap this, Nothing happened with the text, but something did happen with our symbol. And that's exactly what we wanted. So now I'm going to press R and 90 and have it rotate like this. Looks pretty cool already. I'm going to make it a tad bit smaller, bring it upwards. And if you press on this button right here, you can actually see what you're doing. And I like seeing what I'm doing. First of all, I'm going to make it something like this. Bring it down a bit. Looks like it's uh, pretty much in the middle. And now this looks pretty cool. But we still have our problem where the text is seeing true. And we do not want that. So we're going to control zero and create a mixed node. And now I'm going to use a multiply. And set the factor to one. Uh, now what is happening? Nothing much. Uh, reason for it, we need to invert the color. So I'm going to shift A, invert color and I inverted this color, so now this is black. And as you remembered from the sphere, everything that is black will be removed. So we've got our white symbol, we placed our black text over it, and remove whatever is black from the white symbol. I hope that makes sense. Uh, so that is what happened, and now our text is actually over our symbol. And that is very cool. Now I'm going to duplicate this mixed color node, and I'm going to set it to mix. And the reason I'm doing that, because we can now use this symbol as a factor for this mix node, which means that everything that is white uh, will be a certain color and everything that is black will be the other color. Now we've already assigned a point A and in the point B, we can assign what is white within the symbol to be a different color. That's the way a mask works. So if I change this color, it's going to be blue or red or orange or make it whatever you want it to be. Uh, the colors of my brand or my channel are blue and orange. So I'm just going for blue and I always use this for anything I, uh, I do. Blue and orange, it's just my favorite. And here I'm going to add a hue and saturation value node. And now if you think that this blue is not strong enough, uh, which I can fully understand that you can increase the saturation and it will be a stronger blue. But before we can see if this actually works out the way we want it to, I want to add some bump to this. Add a bump node, take our image into the height, into the normal, and now we've got this cool looking bump. Our text is going through now once again. So actually we want to use this multiply in the bump. And now it works out. So we're going to change the strength to something way less. I think 0 0.3 or something would be fine. Maybe 0.2 even, 0.25. Looks pretty cool. So that's pretty much it for this texture. And uh, as I told you, we've got our hue and saturation node. And now we can very easily change the hue within the white of our symbol. So pick whatever color you like. I'm just going for blue, 0.5, it's my blue. You can change the saturation to make it a stronger blue or a softer blue. I'm going for 1.63 and the value determines how white or 
how light or how dark it is. And actually this looks pretty cool if you ask me. If you just turn it down entirely, you've only got the bump, very cool. But I'm not going to do that. Value on one, maybe even a little bit brighter, 1.2. Two, three. So we're going to make our second texture now, which is going to be the aluminium for the rest of the can. And the way I'm going to do it is by going over to slot one. And here we've got an entirely empty scene. Press A somewhere in this empty space and press point. And now we can find our notes. And the principle B is the F is located right over here. And I'm going to add a noise texture. If you want to know how I did that so quickly, I've actually assigned some customized shortcuts in order to get my noise textures quicker, because otherwise you have to type it each time. I don't like that. So noise texture is my shift one. Uh, this will not work for you unless you enable that. I've got an entire tutorial on this and how to do it. Control T, so this is our texture node. I'm going to increase it by a whole lot. Plug it into the object, by the way, because then it will be deformed in the shape of the object itself. Uh, this is starting to look pretty cool. Detail always up, control, and increase the metallic. And decrease the roughness. I'm going to change this color to a darker grayish. And increase the whites on this a little bit. I'm just going to add another noise texture, plug it into this vector. Here's a bump, 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 and add it to the height, add the bump to the normal. Now it's way too much, probably. Yeah, way too much. So we're going to decrease that by a whole lot. 0 0.01. That looks uh, pretty much like a can. I'm not entirely sure about it yet. Let's see it in cycles. So let's add an HDRI just real quick in order to see what it looks like. Easy HDRI. Yeah, so we're going to increase the specularity clear coat. Yeah, something like this. Something could be better. Yeah, I think I think it's in the roughness. And that's how you get a beautiful looking can. So our can is looking very fine. I think with other HDRIs it will look fine as well. And there you go, it looks pretty cool, looks pretty realistic if you ask me. Now that we've got our model and texture, we need some professional lighting. And lighting is one of the most important aspects of making a good looking render. So click here to watch the next video.